all right. So the goal for today, the the goal for tonight, this first session, um, uh, for this this first session, we're gonna we're gonna actually get documentation, embedded documentation to render, and we're gonna port over the stuff that is already working in command box. So that's what our goal is for today, right now. See, that's why. I, oh God, print log printf is so much better because it gives you the time of your output when you use combine it with entr. So like when you do this. And you run it it gives you the timed output so you can see whether it's a fresh output if you're doing if you're using print statements to do some of your debugging while you're doing development it's a really great idea really truly the world wants to know should you and i don't mean to make light of it but i'm trying to just laugh about something should i use bin bash or should i use user bin env bash it's such a big question and it plagues me constantly uh for so reason. the main reason that this plagues me is because it's there's reasons to do both there's very sound reasons to do both uh bin bash just works it's 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 secure it doesn't do a subshell i mean it it it, it can't be taken over it doesn't re depend on a bad path uh all of the works for people who are using z shell uh or, or they're on mac and they have stuff in really weird places because apple decided to put it in the wrong place or they're on cali or they're on you know, Raspberry Pi or whatever, it might put Bash in the wrong place. And so that helps your scripts. And if you want to make a script shareable, use user BNV. Otherwise, don't. It's more secure. But the funny thing is, is that sometimes you think, I think something's not going to be shared and it ends up that you want to share it. And so it, should you just default to one or the other? I don't know. Another possibility is to just write all your utilities and go and compile them so people don't have to answer this question ever again. Uh, there's actually another really good reason to make Go utilities uh, where you would use user B and E and V well, instead. Not only that, your utility can do things that shell scripts cannot. It can do uh, bin S, I mean, it can set UID uh, and do really powerful things. Um, it can be used as a from scratch container without, you know, carrying Alpine and BusyBox. Um, so these are all reasons that. Uh, I feel the pull back to bin bash. So I'm going to start, I, I went through and I changed all my scripts just recently because I was on Mac to use user bin env and I'll leave them there like that for a while until I can port them to go. But if, if it's like that, Z shell, we just had another uh, team member join who's big on Z shell and, and you know, I fucking hate Z shell. It doesn't matter. People still love it and they use it. And if you make tools that you want to share with your team and you use bin bash, you won't be able to share them with them because they'll be using um Half is completely independent if they can be having z shell and use bin bash obviously but if you want them to kind of come on some sort of agreement about how things should be coded or whatever uh they might choose to make only POSIX shell scripts or something like that and if they do that then you could do it a different way as go utilities that would be silly but it's i'm going to try really hard to either use bin sh scripts or go utilities and I definitely will do a lot of bash in the middle. And if I do, it'll be bin bash because bit user bin E and V bash means it's Terms. too big. Um, user bin E and V is uh, really insecure because it can be manipulated versus bin bash, which is very explicit. So if you're doing anything with security with shell scripting, you should always use explicit shebang What's lines. more, if you're truly, if some of the earlier shell scripts that were really interested in security would set an explicit path as like the second line in the file. Uh, so that everything that came after that was only able to be run from that explicit path. And that prevents the path from being hijacked by anything that you type the name of the command, what you want to look help by help on. And other times you have to type the command and then you type dash H and you get help for that command. So in one case, you've got the help up front uh, with the word help up front and other times that's after and you can never remember which one it's going to be. It's always annoyed me about Cobra. So, uh, the person that's not having programming experience, any reason to go away from Go or towards it, and what books would you use? Uh, first of all, there's no real good books on Go, and Go 1.18 is just coming out at the end of the month, so wait. That's my answer. My answer to you is wait. Wait to learn Go. Yes, learn Go, but wait for about a month or two until uh, it gets 1. solid. 18 is the biggest uh, breakthrough in Go. It has so many massive changes to the language that learning anything before 1.18 is really, unless it's necessary for backward compatibility, it's just a waste of time for a beginner. So make sure you learn that anything has covers. I think Go is the most important first language a person should learn besides Bash and Shell. And I know that's very unpopular to say that, 
Uh, but when we do the beginner boost on May the 4th, which is a big, long 18 week thing, we're going to be learning how to code in Bash and Go because Go is strictly typed, which helps you be a better programmer from the it's beginning. It's really unpopular. Um, usually it's JavaScript or Python. And I taught both of those languages for five or eight years, like at Skillstack as the first language. But I really think that the simplicity, while still having strict typing in Go, is really, really good to help a beginner, particularly since it has generic it's not now. support inheritance, but it does support embedding. So you can make one struct and you can have that struct embed another struct. You can have an interface embed another interface. And so it's something about Ruby that I really liked back in the day called uh, mix-ins, where it brings together stuff through composition. Uh, yeah, I love it. And be able to pass type. I mean, you're going to be able to do things like map filter reduce, which has been sort of, you know, persona non grata and go for a long time because, you know, just write a fucking for loop. But these these concepts from that are in functional programming are now coming back because of generics. I'm going to make an exploration into the potential use of anonymous structures with methods and i have never played with that before it might not be possible but i'm going to go look for that and see what i can do there if i can do that i can fix this problem here and give it a call but everything in the pipeline has a thread and you can pull on that thread and you can make the whole pipeline collapse that's what that's what contacts are <laughs> and make it go away and clean up nicely a lot and play some your logos in the background while i study and program, program, keep doing what you're doing, brother. Thank you. That makes me good, feel good when you guys send me that stuff. If you if you are being helped at all, please let me know. It makes me feel good. That is um, this thing here. I mean, right here. That's the command. It's going to be called bonsai-pomo or maybe just pomo, or to be a crop slash pomo. But right now it's broke. So you can't get it. <laughs> But it's coming, and I'll have it. I'll fix it, and you can get it again. Oh. Let's go. God, I feel stupid. I feel stupid. And look how fast I found it when I took a break and I came back. It was like the first thing I saw. Moral of the story: Take breaks. Seriously, people, take breaks. You'll come back. You're like, oh my god, and you like save yourself an hour. My go pls. Look at how smart it is. If I name my command Z, it's gonna say, oh, you want to name it Z? I'm going to help you out. Boom. I didn't notice that before. That is awesome. Uh, operating system boundaries. Here's a bunch of escapes for the terminal. These go with NC terminal escapes. Here's the main program to print the red thing. Uh, we ran our compile uh, using Go uh, for Windows. And what are we going to get on Windows? Let's take a look. All right. So, so now we have a file called terminal.exe. We're going to SCP that file over to Windows, which is running on my VM. I'm going to SSH into the VM, uh, an LS terminal. You can see it here in PowerShell. We can run it, and we see that it prints red because Windows Terminal supports color and curses, period. The lightweight terminal escapes that ha that have been codified into, into all creations since the dawn of the 70s, and you don't need to use any of the stupid, unnecessary function calls to initiate color. It's actually a bad idea to detect do that. It and just print black and white. Who cares? You need to do that anyway because you need to detect whether yours have a terminal at all. Otherwise, you're going to be, you know, spending a whole bunch of sending a whole bunch of escape sequences to somebody's like more pipe or grep or something. You're going to like totally ruin their day. Makes them so much easier to read. And all you have to do is add these things uh, to your bash RC. You have to add these very variables and give them the escape for the colors that you want. The end. It's not that hard. I need to figure something out about a generics a couple times. So I need to know what the tildes work mean in generics. So if I, instead of doing all this, I think I can just do this. I think I can just do this and be done with it. Um, and I need to figure out what the standard generic uh, types are. There's apparently some that are already pre-built, and I need to go look at those really quick. So I'm going to do that right now. You know, Pomo's doing the help here, so we're just working from that as our basis. But... Um, uh, we are going to go ahead and I'm going to do a functional parser instead. So we're going to come back to this and rather do the top down recursive descent parser, we're going to do a, a different one.